Hi everybody, it's Sandy here and it's time for the New Moon Rose Reading. And these readings seem to get closer and closer together. Um, it's like, how did that happen that we've come round again to this, to this new moon? Uh, just extraordinary. Um, anyway, I hope you're all doing, you know, I, uh, all doing okay. I think this is the, uh, the optimum word. I mean, so many people have been um, so poorly with one illness or another in this last few weeks. It's just, we've come really to the end of um, a seven week window, if you like. And actually the new moon tomorrow closes that seven week window. And it's been such a difficult window for many of us. It's incorporated, as I say, not, you know, having various health issues, um, clearing, cleaning, purging on one way or another. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Um, yeah. Hi, Ashley. Um, it's, it's just been tough. And for many of us, it's been an, in, um, an emotionally tough um, period of time too, to actually manage to stay in our bodies while we've been trying to process out some really quite deep emotional things and um, yeah just just not an easy time and and I certainly have felt for myself hi Vicky hi um, you know there was a, there was a sort of a, a line in the sand so to speak as we moved into this new year oh and hi Vicky hi um, that uh, that really changed um, a, a, a flavor of, of this this journey for us what this journey means for us um, as individuals but also as a collective and there's a real sense that there is something really quite tangible that is changing in our experience of the world and um, our dynamics uh, in our humanity for those that are frequencing in a way that is um, that is visionary for the future that we can create for our ourselves our families and our communities so this is really potent time that we're in um, this new moon um, as I say closes this seven week gateway and then starts to prepare us to come into this eclipse season and it feels to me that it's it's catapulting it's forcing us to actually address the issues that are still residual um, that in any way take us out of the fifth dimensional field of frequency it's um, anything that is going to create a distraction for us or anything that in the body is needing to be refined this feels to me to be where we're being called to focus. So many people are changing their diets, many people are really looking at what they put into this temple, into this, this uh, vehicle, and of course our, our homes are, are our bigger template of that. So they too hold our story, they too hold the energies and the the pieces that we've chosen to have around us. Hi Elaine, um, welcome, thank you for joining. Um, so there's a, there's a reflection that's going on in this temple space and in our external temple. So what is it that's still calling for refinement? What is it that's calling for letting go? Um, I've got three more bags of, of my clearing things that are going to the charity shops that are local here, just releasing. And if we are um, choosing to, to refine these energy fields that we, that we inhabit, you know, there is this place of traveling light. And are we traveling light or are we traveling as light? So each cell in our bodies holds a, 
packet of energy, a packet of light. And this journey of spiritualizing the physical is the work that we're engaged in. And my feeling is that we've got, we're again, we're working into a window up into some very, very potent um, uh, astrology that's setting itself up for 2020. So we're in this new window, this time frame. And I think these eclipses that are coming up, especially this one at the end of the month, which has got a mirror into last August. So look at whether the uh, eclipse was, was a potent experience for you back in August. What's the flavor of it that is likely to be showing itself again for looking at in this time go round? So these, these are just fascinating times to navigate and for us to stay as present as we possibly can in the present moment because that's where our transformation occurs. If we can stay with the uncomfortable feelings, if we can honour ourselves in, in what's coming up for us and actually not try to numb it out or anaesthetic it in a way that we might have done in the past, but to be present to it in, you know, regardless of how painful it is, if we can hold that, that space for ourselves, we are moving into that place of inner mastery, into that place of self-mastery, which is the journey that we're on. Mastering our emotional self, our physical self, our, our mental self, so that we can be a radiant light out into the world. And we can bring these beautiful high frequency energies down through a cleared temple space so that we can be acupuncture points of light on the planet and be radiant lights for others that um, you know come to us for that comfort and for us to hold our, our lanterns up to to eliminate illum, illuminate darker passages that we that we move through in life. So let's see what the roses have got to offer us um, as their wisdom for today. So are you drawn to rose card one, to rose card two, or to rose card three? And just to point out today, behind me I've got rose three, which is um, the joy rose, uh, up behind me as a, as a hanging. And she's always got sort of a really comforting and comfortable sort of feeling. You know, it's like... Oh, joy has got my back. Yes. <laughs> anyway, if you chose and were drawn to rose card one, she is rose angel eight. And now rose angel eight, she's one of the rose angels and the rose angels are the five uh, wounds to love of abandonment, betrayal, denial, judgment and separation. And this particular rose angel, rose angel eight, sits on the solar plexus. So the wound that she comes to illuminate is betrayal. And the jewel from that is trust. So what she's calling us to do is to come deeply into trust of ourselves. Trust of our gut wisdom, trust of our intuition. And know that our inner guidance, our inner guidance system, our inner GPS is going to lead us in the right direction. And when we can really trust that gut wisdom, gut, trust that gut instinct on something, it enables us to bring focus and to, uh, to chart our course from that place of trust. So if you remember, the rose angels sit, the base chakra one is the, is the wound of abandonment, and that's where we have self-love, self-value, and self-esteem. And that rises up. That, that, that jewel of self-love goes in on the crown. This is the jewel that sits of trust. And that trust goes into the, uh, the energies on the, t on the crown and this self-mastery of 
um, of our gut wisdom. And the solar plexus is the center of personal will. Without that active and without that being ready to carry us forward, you know, an idea remains an idea unless there's action to it. So when we trust our gut wisdom and our intuition and our ideas and know that they are, they are nectar, then we can, you know, and we can, we can harness that and, and take that out and, and fully trust what's coming up for us in that, um, that place. So this is a rose that works on the solar plexus and she's all about that trusting yourself, trusting your gut wisdom and intuition. Really beautiful, beautiful rose. She's, you know, her, her golden heart is beautifully radiant and open. So she's, she's really ready to step forward. If you chose rose card two, she is rose bagua nine. Now rose, the rose bagua are nine roses that are the heartfelt expression of our, of our inner qualities in, out into the world. And so this rose is all about fame and illumination. So, oh, sorry, I've got a cat that wants to come through as well. I hope she doesn't take the, I hope she's going to take the camera off. Um, so this is about really being very, very clear about what you offer. You know, really clear about your gifts and then stepping forward with those gifts. So this particular position in the Bagua is like the ultimate expression. This is where you go, go to shine. So she is about taking your, your jewels, your gems, and being able to weave those into your work in the world or you know, the way you work within your family or your community or whatever way you are in service to others in the world. But she allows you to do it and she encourages it, you to do it to the fullness of your ability and with just total, total trust and focus that you are totally on point, totally in the right place and um, sharing your gifts in, the, in this powerful way. So she's like a, um, a, a chalice that holds the, the, the energy. Powerful rose. And if you chose rose card three, she is rose two. Now rose two is an absolute beauty. She's from the original rose set and uh, she sits on the third eye. She sits on the Ajna on the third eye. She's very connected to the pineal gland. And uh, the pineal gland, of course, you know, should be for all of us a crystalline organ, which unfortunately with fluoride and the way things are, have been, um, the, the, the fluoride in the water calcifies the pineal. So we don't have as clear an antennae, a crystalline antennae to, um, gosh, sorry, um, to, to, to pick up and know our cosmic connections. She is like a, a cosmic connector um, antennae. So she really, this rose, she, she, when we work with her, she spins, she creates absolute clarity, absolute radiant clarity in the mind, and then she drops to the heart. So she carries a beautiful violet prana that purifies. I mean, for you, th those of you that work with the violet flame, this rose has a very similar sort of energy. She clears away the debris, she clears away the dross, and then she drops down to the heart. And when she, turns, when she returns to the heart, she turns to gold. Violet prana, when it comes to the heart field, turns gold. So she, what she does is that she radiates and she increases the flame on the heart field. So this is, about, this is about giving yourself time to get absolutely clear 
about uh, where you're going and what you're doing before you take action. If, if the pineal gland is the center of higher will, the solar plexus is the center of personal will. And when the solar plexus is, is married to the heart chakra, then you are love in action. So this is, she's this, you know, this center is very, very clear. It's, she's got these sort of raggedy le uh, petals all around her, but the center is absolutely clear. So these three roses together, they really, uh, they, there's a sort of keynote with them of clarity. So this rose is saying, totally trust. Tr trust your gut wisdom, trust your inner knowing. And if you've got a gut feeling that you're really not too sure about, give it some time, let yourself tune in so that you know where that energy is coming from and you know totally that it's authentically, uh, you know, gut wisdom in, in guiding you to action. This one, clarified action and, and, and stepping forward, stepping out. And that's really felt to be this shift that we're experiencing now through this new moon. It's like this closing of this seven week window enables us to start to take steps forward and that moves us forward then into the, into the full moon on the 31st. So beautiful rose um, and all about fame and illumination, that ultimate expression of, of our journey through life. And if you chose rose card three, clarity, allowing the, um, you know, a allowing yourself to take time in meditation, in contemplation, allowing the, this energy to, to spin and clear the monkey mind so that there is a stillness that drops down to the heart that turns to gold so that you then are able to activate the solar plexus and be love in action. Beautiful roses for us this time. Uh, with a lovely message which seems so pertinent as we go through this um, this new moon. So, I hope there's something there that's um, given you uh, a little bit of focus. And um, I'm just going to put my glasses on so I can read the writing. Oh, thank you, Ashley. I know you've had a, a really difficult... Um, couple of weeks and uh, having lost a, a treasure, a special um, presence in your life. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're all navigating our way and um, hopefully we can all be a comfort and a light for each other on this, on this journey home, this home, journey home to ourselves, to the heart, to love. And uh, yeah, so I've done this reading a day early this time because I'm actually going to be in London in a sacred circle by the River Thames in the city of London tomorrow and I might get a chance to do a little video, a little bit of live stream from there. Um, and those of you that get the newsletter, the new calendar is on the, on the newsletter. Um, I'm doing a free uh, webinar on the night of the 24th of January, um, which will be all about the, um, the rose path, uh, the way of the rose, and how that might be able to inspire and, and help you. And I've got some new classes and things that will be on the calendar, on the, web, on the uh, newsletter, or if you go to my website, rosealchemy.com, and have a look on the events page. I've got a new Rose 1 class coming up um, on the 9th of February, and a Rose 2, a back-to-back, -back, which might, um, might be of interest to you. Um, 
But anyway, I hope you have a really good day tomorrow. I know it's intense just now because the energies are beginning to cook. The energies, when, when we're coming into the closest point of the uh, coming into this new moon, into the, into the void, then the energies become more and more intense for us to, to, to work with. Once we move through this in just a few hours now, well, it'll be in the early morning tomorrow here in the UK, um, there will be a sense of ease and that will ease again as we go towards the end of the month. We're not out of the woods yet. I, my sense is that we won't be able to really feel that we are, are through this until we get to, to March. But, um, you know, we, we all are here for one another. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for mu so much for joining me in this uh, sharing of the Rose work. And, uh, yeah, much love and rosy blessings. Bye for now. Bye-bye.